Good morning, Salem High School. I'm Christy Riley here at SHS Today, and with me today is the one and only Devin Norris. We're here to bring you the latest news. The LGBT club here is a new and upcoming club at Salem High School. Michaela Ryan and I wanted to get a preview of this club, so we spoke to Alex Gulliver, the club president, to get some more information. How many members are, do you have currently? The LGBT Alliance currently has around 25 members. Are the members predominantly from a certain grade, or is there a nice mix of variety? There's a good mix of all the grades. There's a lot of freshmen that came out, and that's really good, because it's a really nice introduction to the high school, a way to make friends. How might someone interested join the club? Just show up. Just show up to the club. We meet every other Wednesday in Miss Harrigan's room, room 209. Um, what do you guys uh, discuss or do during meetings and events? We discuss the ways that we think we can improve the school and improve just the culture of the high school in general. Why did you feel the need to start an LGBT club at Salem High? We didn't have one and there were a lot of people who could benefit from it. Like I said, we've only had about two meetings and 25 people are there and it created a nice community of people that they can talk to and rely on. Um, what can kids expect when they join this club or community? To be welcomed in by everyone there and to be okay and like have a support group behind them to support them. Well, I have nothing but the best wishes for the organization and everyone here at SHS hopes the club will do well. If you're interested in join, att joining or attending a meeting, you can visit Ms. Harrigan in room 209 for more information or you can get in touch with Alex Gulliver. Yes, I agree, Devin. <clears throat> in other news, Mayi and Tara looked at the efforts of SHS students and faculty to raise money for the Santa Fund organization and Toys for Tots, which allows people to donate new and unwrapped toys for kids who aren't as fortunate. Let's take a look. December is a perfect month to give back to your community and to help and to end your year with doing great deeds. Here at Salem High, the Student Council is hosting their own their very own Santa Fund collection for people here in our very own community. The JRTC is hosting Toys for Tots, and we were able to get more insight by insight on interviewing people for these wonderful holiday organizations. Well, for as long as I remember we've been doing it, um, I've been a member since freshman year, so all four years I've been here, but I do believe that it's been a tradition for a while now, and ever since the Salem Santa Fun kind of started, we've been participating in it. Well, Choice of Tots is a program uh, sponsored by the U.S. Marine Corps. Uh, here in the town of Salem, the location point is at the Salem Police Department, where people could drop off toys and what I know about the program, uh, people donate brand new toys in original packaging and they go to disadvantaged families uh, who, uh, parents who cannot afford to get toys for their kids for Christmas. The fundraiser actually goes directly towards people in Salem, which is cool because a lot of the fundraisers around here don't. And so the Salem Santa Fund, what it does is all the money they raise, it goes directly towards families in Salem who can't afford for Christmas dinner or like presents and stuff. So they go out and use the money to get that for them and then they can have a great holiday season. Well last year was the first year we actually did it and our role was they collected the toys at a location in Salem. It was an old uh, disused uh, storefront and what we did we packaged them up, sorted them out by families based on a list we were given by Mrs. Sweet who was in, in charge of it last year. And that's what we did. We pretty much sectioned them off which toys went to which families. It's basically just to provide families in the area who can't afford uh, Christmas dinner and presents. Um, I'm sure m many of us kind of wake up with that luxury on Christmas morning, but a lot of them don't. So I think it's awesome to be able to give back to them and kind of allow them the fun holiday season. I think the Santa Fun collection is a great thing to have here at SHS. It really helps out families and people who need help. It's important to donate to this cause because, because when you give to other people, it's just such a great feeling. And yeah, it's great to get stuff, but when you give to other people, um, it has a deeper meaning in your heart. I think it's a good idea because it provides food for people who can't afford the food. I've heard of, toy, from, of uh, Toys for Tots before. Um, I haven't really donated before um, on my own like I've done back in elementary school when, they, when everyone brought in gifts I did. But I never really did it, like, just out on my own. It seems like it's a really great cause, because, I mean, you're just giving money so that way people can have, like, all these meals and stuff. And it's not, like, hurting the community at all. It's just, like, like, it's just, it helps people so much, because, like, you can give them meals, and you can give them other stuff that they don't have, and they're struggling right now. So it must help the community a lot. <laughs> I think the Santa Fun collection is very nice. 
to help out people. I think it's a great way to start off the holiday spirit. It's because you're starting off the holiday season on a good foot and you're giving back to people in the community. It's important because you have all these celebrations, you have all these meals, you feel like this is normal to you. To some people, it's not normal. Like, they don't have enough money to provide for themselves, so if you can help them, it's just, it's a nice way to say thank you. Even if they can't say it to you f physically or right to your face, they will appreciate it a lot. Great way to s start off my holiday spirit, probably because it just makes me feel good. Like, to know that I'm helping out somebody else and to know that they're getting a benefit out of it, I'm getting like this genuine happy spirit. Christmas is about being happy and joyful and being thankful for what you have. And it's just a great way to start. It's the season of giving and it's best to start it off by giving. Don't forget to donate and show off the wonderful holiday spirits that's all inside of all of you guys. It's so nice that organizations like this exist for people who aren't as fortunate. Make sure to do your part and donate if you are able to. I agree, Christy. The Salem Talent Show is coming up soon, and Brooke and Sean decided to talk to some of the contestants. The Talent Show will be this Thursday on December 8th. Let's check it out. Every year, the sophomore class of that school year hosts the annual Talent Show, and this year there are some great acts that are sure to dazzle and amaze everyone. And the best part is that all of the money goes to the sophomore class for events and things like their junior and senior prom. So come support SHS, your fellow students performing, and the sophomore class. The date of the talent show is Thursday, December 8th at 6.30 p.m. We, it's no cost to put on the show, but it is donation to the sophomore class to raise money, $7 at the door or $5 worth of canned goods. I will not be attending this year's talent show. Unfortunately, I will not. I have a very busy schedule, so I won't have time to, but I've heard it's very good. Um, not this year. Um, probably. I think I'm just going to support people because I have a lot of friends that are going to be in the talent show, so. Um, I will be going. Uh, no, I cannot attend this year. I have work, but I have heard it's pretty good, so if I can get out of work, I would like to go. I've never been to any of the talent shows, to be honest. I've been to the two previous ones. Freshman year, I was a judge for a talent show. I know there was very good talent that year. It was hard to pick a winner. And then last year, I was part of student council, so I, we helped ran it. So I was one of the snack, and I know it went well last year also. I have, and they're pretty cool. I haven't, even though like my two best friends did it last year, but I, I didn't go. So I, I feel obligated to now. <laughs> nope. I have not, but I have been to Battle of the Bands, which is somewhat similar, but I haven't been to the talent show. Uh, I have not. We all show up a few hours early. The day before we have a rehearsal, to make sure everything goes smoothly in order to prepare. The night of is might be hectic, but every Wednesday morning we've had meetings to prepare, so we're hoping it goes nice and smooth set up the backdrop, mic checks, axe order, axe in order, all the basics. Hosting the talent show was great. It was fun. There was a lot of talent and my speech, not speech, script was uh, pretty well, pretty well made, so it went smoothly, pretty smoothly. Hosting should be should be fun this year. It's not my event, so like it's, I'm junior and the sophomores running it. So it should be interesting because I'm not completely in charge of it, so I don't know exactly what the talent is going to be. In order to be ready for the talent show, we had to organize sign-up dates, make sure the gym was ready for yeah. us, plan out audio and all the equipment we'd need for lighting and the backstage prop. And we also had to make banners and flyers. There's one right outside the cafeteria. We amped it up in the classes, talk to all our friends, make sure we get a good turnout, and then we have around 18 acts to perform, so it should be good. Um, I'm expecting a different talent. There was a lot of singing last year, but from what I've heard, it's not gonna be as much this year. So. It's a very fun f um, fundraiser for the sophomore class. It's a very big one, and it's a good f um, fundraiser to get you to the next level for fundraisers and get you thinking every year. It's um, very cool and like different people in school can like showcase talent where they can't showcase anywhere else. I think it's good because the people that have talents that 
don't get to show them off. Like some people that are in bands, like if they're really good musicians in marching band, you don't really get to show that off, but they could show it off at a talent show or they could try stand-up comedy or something. It's just kind of an experience for people that can put their talent out there. I think that like we have a lot of talented people, so it's something that it will work instead of like selling things. It's better to just go and see something because we do have a lot of talented people, so people might want to do that. Well, I think it's cool for people to be able to show like what they're good at because sometimes you don't have the opportunity, so having that one thing that like it doesn't matter what you're good at, you can go and perform for people. So I don't think it's a good fundraiser because many people don't think that it's a good opportunity to like go watch the talent or like not many people want to be in the talent show, so I don't know. I think there could be something better. I think it's a really cool idea for people to come in and showcase their talents. I just kind of wish that there was more of a variety for talents. Instead of just like singing and uh, bands, there should be like dancing and stuff like that. So. Oh, that's really cool. Many of the acts are returning talent show veterans. Uh, a lot of the singing acts are the baton twirlers are going to be back. We have some new tap dances. All of the people who have signed up are very talented, and they should act uh, very well with the audience. Come show your Salem pride and support the sophomore class and all of the talent this year's talent show. I think the talent show is a great event here at SHS, as it really shows the talent tricks and hobbies of many of the students here. What do you think, Christy? I agree, Devin. It's a great event to have. Speaking of great things, Brennan and I took a look at the National Technical Honor Society, an organization that gives awards to the most distinguished members of CTE courses. Let's take a peek. This week, we decided to look at the National Technical Honor Society. The National Technical Honor Society is an organization that rewards CTE students' chances at many great things. We got a look at some great people. The National Technical Honor Society was established at Salem High School, or Salem CTE, also known as Salem Vocational Center in the old days, in 1993. Three teachers took a master's level course and decided that that was one of the projects that they were going to um, put forward. It was Mr. Pelletier, Mrs. Murray, and Mrs. Leone. The National Technical Honor Society is a society that honors the achievements of top career and technical education students. It provides scholarships to encourage the pursuit of higher education and cultivates excellence in today's highly competitive skilled workforce. The society awards over $200,000 in scholarships each year to career and technical education students. The National Technical Honor Society is similar to the National Honor Society, except you have to be involved in a career and technical education program in order to be inducted or to be uh, qualified to join. In order to be nominated into the society, a student must end their first year of CTE with a 90% or better, an A or an A minus. The following year, year two of the CTE program, the student must have an A or an A minus in the first quarter. Then we go in and we look at all of the statistics. The student must have an overall career GPA of 2.5 or higher. They must be nominated by their instructor as well. The student must meet the criteria set forth in the National Technical Honor Society bylaws. And some of those include good attendance, good behavior, GPA we already discussed, good attitude, professionalism, and once again recommended by their instructor. Well, you have to maintain a quality grade point average. You have to be a dedicated uh, and um, well-studied student. You also have to participate in community service activities. The National Technical Honor Society likes students that are well-rounded, not just myopically focused on their academics, but also participate in other areas of school life and give back to their community in some way. Uh, if you're a well-rounded student and you're participating in a career and technical education program, you uh, can be a candidate for the society. 
benefits. Um, we have a candlelight ceremony where the students describe the attributes and light candles. Um, those attributes are skill, honesty, service, responsibility, scholarship, citizenship, leadership. Um, the colors, they present the colors. Silver is equivalent to value, white, purity, and purple, royalty, the person of honor. Okay, so students receive a certificate, and they used to come in this package. The Honor Society has revamped the certificates, the cords and the tassels to look like this package, and you can go to www.nths.org if you want to get a closer look. Well, I mostly work behind the scenes with uh, for Mrs. Barubi. Um, I get together um, the packets for the podium when they give out all the certificates to the students. Um, I also um, put together, get the cords ready. They get beautiful cords that are purple and silver, and everyone gets cords that they can wear um, at graduation. Um, I put together the cards. Different students are selected, and they... Um, have speeches the night of the award ceremony and I put together a set of cards to leave on the podium so that if somebody should get a, a little forgetful for some of their lines there's something there that they can refer to. It's a wonderful evening. Parents are invited. Dr. Delahanty addresses the students. Mrs. Collier addresses the students. The Culinary Arts Department makes refreshments for after the ceremony the ceremony takes less than one hour. The teachers are present to adorn the students with their cords, as well as Mrs. Palmer, the assistant superintendent. They have been doing this for years. They spend a lot of time creating their speeches for the guests and for the students um, because they're so proud of them. We have a really pretty display of candles because there's a candle lighting ceremony. So my job is kind of to get those candles ready and um, they kind of decorate them with some pretty purple and silver bows because that's the colors of National Technical Honor Society. So um, that's kind of the stuff that I put together and in the packets that I put together, there are um, a pin, a beautiful pin that they get and uh, stickers and um, I just make sure all that's in a, together and everybody has their stuff ready to go. The benefits can be great. It's something that you can put on your resume and uh, to have that as a, um, an honor or recognition or a membership on your resume you, as you apply for colleges uh, and scholarships. <clears throat> to be a member of not only the National Honor Society, but any other honor society is a testament to your work ethic, to your academic skill, to your um, willingness to work hard, your willingness to bounce back if you haven't succeeded the first time, your willingness to put yourself out there and take some risks, your willingness to give back, as I mentioned earlier, you might want to participate in some community service activities uh, and a membership in the um, Technical Honor Society uh, is a, um, a testament to your contributions to your school community and your willingness to invest in yourself. That's all for today, Selm High. I had no idea the National Technical Honor Society was, but now that I do, it's great to see that hardworking students are getting awarded with their greatness. Yes, I agree, Devin. It's nice to see people work hard at what they love to do. Anyway, that's all the time we have for today, Selm High. I'm Christy Riley. And I'm Devin Norris. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time, Salem High.